Good morning, friends. It's Jason from Grip Tape to bring you another episode of the Comfy UI Grip Tape Nodes. In today's video, I'm going to be introducing a new node to you. Uh, this is the Grip Tape Convert Agent to Tool node, which allows you to take an existing agent that has all sorts of tools and powers and abilities, convert it into a tool, and give that to another agent. So why would you want to do that? Why would you want to take an agent, convert it to a tool, and give it to another agent? Well, there may be times that you have agents that are good at particular things, and you want to be able to give other agents access to them. For example, in this case, I have an agent that I'm interacting with that has some rules, um, and they are really good at being able to explain things to beginning developers. Now, I want to ask it about what the best CSS framework is for React. And without giving it any extra abilities or information, it may say, you know, popular CSS framework is material UI, et cetera, and give me some answers. That's cool. What if I want to give it some information that's more specific, maybe a little bit more nuanced, maybe uh, something that is based off of some web research. I have another agent over here that can do just that. It has access to a web search tool and a web scraper. It also has a couple of rules explaining how it should behave. So for example, it is helpful uh, and has answers that are insightful but concise, and it believes that knowledge is power, which of course it is. And it also has some rules about being an expert CSS developer, can use web searching, can scrape websites, etc. So there's lots of information here about how this particular agent can answer questions. Now, this agent may not be very good at giving information to beginning developers. It is extremely opinionated, and it knows a lot about the web, and it has the ability to search web tools and stuff like that. What I can do is I can take this agent and I can convert it into a tool and now I can give that tool to this other agent. And what will happen is when this agent runs, if this agent decides that it needs a bit more information, it can use this other agent and all of its abilities and tools as a very simple tool. And instead of overwhelming this agent with more rules and more tools and more rule sets, it basically has a single tool that it knows how to use, which is the CSS developer tool, and it says it's useful for answering questions about CSS. So if I run this, it will come back with a lot more detailed information about what type of CSS framework to use for React based off of all of the research of this other agent. Let's take a look at another example of using this technique to generate some images. So here you can see I've got an agent, which I've given a prompt to that says, create a beautiful and emotional image of a child's lost toy sitting in a puddle. I give it a little bit more information, and the goal is to generate an image from that prompt by taking the output, giving it to a um, create image from text node, and getting the final image. Now, I didn't want to just use the default image that would be generated from this prompt. What I wanted to do was give this agent special powers. So the first thing I did was I created some rules that said you have access to experts in their respective fields, I told it how to work with those experts, and then I said use the expert on image prompting for the final prompt. I then created four different experts as tools to feed to the agent. I have a agent here, which is a cinematographer, and it has specific rules. It says you identify as a cinematographer, you care about light and shadow, etc. I have another agent, which is a color theorist, which is uh, really good at color theory, Another one that is a detail enthusiast who cares about details, about specific things, about images, uh, make sure to describe things as specific and not generic. And I have another agent, which is an image prompt expert that has access to a web search tool and a web scraper tool and has all sorts of rules about how it should generate prompts. Each of those agents is then converted into a tool, which are then fed into the organizer agent. So... When this runs, the organizer agent will go ahead and start asking questions from the experts about how to achieve this goal. And then after communicating with them, we'll come up with a final prompt. One of the fun things to do about this is actually watch the process in place. So I have turned on the terminal log, which you can get to in Comfy UI if you just double click and choose terminal log manager. This will allow you to watch the agent as it's working. And I'm going to go ahead and change uh, some settings in here. So instead of a lost toy, let's just say a child's bicycle sitting in a puddle. It's had a bit of a rough time, maybe even been run over. It's a rainy day, a very sad day, but the bicycle and the viewer should have hope. Now, if I cue this and I go down and I look at the log, you'll be able to see things as they're coming. And as this is evaluating, you'll notice that the latest updates come up at the top of the terminal. So you have to sort of keep scrolling up to watch as they go. 
but we'll go through it step by step and explain what's happening. So the first thing that happens is that the agent has this input prompt here. Let me zoom in real quick so we can see this. And it says, create a beautiful and emotional image of a child's bicycle. So this is the prompt that I gave it. Then the agent says, okay, to create the detailed and emotional evocative prompt, I will first gather detailed descriptions and visual elements from the experts. I will start by asking the cinematographer for the scene setup and the color theory expert for the color palette. Then I will ask the detailed enthusiast. So this is one of the cool things about the tape framework is it can use these tools in parallel. So what's happening now is it's going to execute two actions in parallel. First action here is to talk to the cinematographer and it will pass it these arguments. So a child's bicycle sitting in a puddle on a rainy day, bicycle looks worn out, maybe even run over. And then it'll say the same thing to the color theorist. Then the color theorist and the cinematographer will come back with their feedback. So here it says uh, information from the color theorist talking about what colors to use for this image. Here's the information from the cinematographer talking about how to shoot this to be most effective, including what camera and what lens to use. Both of those come back to the agent, which then says, now that I have the scene set up in color palette, I'll ask the detail enthusiast for intricate details to enhance the scene further. This will help in creating a vivid and emotional resonant image prompt. Then the detail-oriented storyteller comes back with a response talking about uh, the bicycle, the handlebars, giving it extra details, how to get the scene to work. All of that comes back to the agent, which says, okay, now with the detailed scene set up, the color palette and intricate details in place, I'll combine all this information and ask the image generation prompter to create the final image generation prompt, which it does coming back with uh, the prompt that it's going to use, which is then sent to the agent. And then the agent outputs that, which we can see here, which is a child's bicycle sitting in a puddle on a rainy day. So it gives it all the information. And you get a really beautiful image by all these agents who are focusing on very, very specific details. One of the other things I didn't point out when I was describing these agents before is that each of these agents are using Olama, Llama 3, as their configuration. So one of the cool things about this is that you can have an organizer agent, which is using one model. For example, this agent is using GPT-4.0. But then these three agents are using Llama 3, which is a local model. So you can actually combine models for particular agents to be able to do very specific tools. Let me show you how to set this up from scratch. I'll clear the workflow. So in order to do this, the first thing you will of course need is to create an agent. So you go to agent, create agent, and this agent of course will take different configurations and tools and rule sets. So let's go ahead and create a rule set. We go grip tape, create rules, and we're gonna say our personality rule set, you identify as Zelda, you love, to communicate via food language. And then I'll create another agent. So now I've got my two agents and I want to connect this agent to this agent and give it to it as a tool. To do that, right mouse button, add node, grip tape, agent, grip tape, convert agent to tool. That will give you this node right here. You take the agent output here from the create agent and you pass it there. And then you take the tool and you pass it here. Now, two very important fields here. You need to give this a name. So we'll say Zelda agent. You gotta name the tool. And you describe what the agent should be used for. Can be used to describe food recipes. Now let's go ahead and do a display text. And just to demonstrate how all of this flows together, Let's take all of these. We're going to group them. So I go right mouse button, add group for selected nodes. And now if I right mouse button over this and do edit group title, I'm just going to call this Zelda. This is going to help me keep track of what's happening over here. And then to show you how this works, let's go ahead and display the output. So I just double click in Comp UI and I turn on the terminal log. Make sure logging is set on. And the first thing I'm going to do is just say, hi. Now, when I run this, you'll see the logs coming back here. And this basically just says the input is high and the output is hello. How can I assist you today? So using chain of thought, this agent knows that the word high does not necessitate asking Zelda or using the tool to ask Zelda for food. So that's why it says, hello, how can I assist you today? If I say, for example, how do I make chicken stock? And I run this. And it will say, to provide a detailed, accurate recipe, I will need to gather the necessary steps and ingredients. 
I'll use the Zelda agent to retrieve this information. So this is the grip tape agent using chain of thought to decide whether or not to use a tool. It decides it's going to use the Zelda tool. It sends the prompt to Zelda. She comes back and says, ah, making chicken stock is like creating a flavorful broth symphony. Here's a recipe that can have your kitchen singing. Provides the recipe to the agent. The agent gets that information back and then interprets it and gives that back to the user. So very simple, but very powerful. Definitely something that has been helping me quite a lot in terms of allowing agents to work together to come up with the best answers for things. I highly recommend giving it a try. Let me know what you think. Have a fantastic afternoon.